Hey everyone, it's Lucky with Unfiltered Lucky. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the incident that occurred on the set of the Alec Baldwin movie Rust. Now, I've been following this since the very beginning because the type of weapon that was used is the type of weapon that I am interested in and that I train with a lot. So I started following this story in the very beginning because how it happened and the chain of events that happened that led up to this incident was a personal interest to me. But then something happened during the course of this investigation and it led to things being a little bit more interesting and a lot more confusing. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. On October 21st of 2021, Alec Baldwin is filming his Western movie Rust just outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico in an old church. And he's rehearsing with cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Now, Joel Souza, who is the director, is also at this rehearsal. And he's going to be rehearsing with a weapon that you would typically expect to see in a Western movie. Now, Alec Baldwin is handed this weapon by first assistant director Dave Halls, who normally would not be handing Alec Baldwin this weapon. Normally, that would be the responsibility of the armorer. Now, the armorer is the person who is responsible for all of these weapons that are on this set. But the armorer, who was 24-year-old Hannah Guterres Reed, was not on set at that time. So Dave Halls takes over the responsibility and hands the weapon to Alec Baldwin. Now, when he hands Alec Baldwin this weapon, he informs him that this weapon is cold, which means that it's either unloaded or that it's loaded with prop rounds, which means that it will not shoot a projectile. The weapon that Alec Baldwin was handed was an antique revolver, a single action antique revolver. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in this video. Now, Alec Baldwin is holding this weapon and he has it pointed at cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Now, standing behind H Helena Hutchins is director Joel Souza. So, Alec Baldwin is basically pointing this weapon in the direction of Helena Hutchins. And they're kind of trying to figure out how to shoot this scene, how to shoot, you know, from what angle do they want to shoot Alec Baldwin holding this weapon. Now, all of a sudden, there's a loud bang, and this weapon has been discharged. The single-action revolver that Alec Baldwin is holding and pointing in Helena Hutchins' direction goes off and it fires a live round. That round goes into Helena Hutchins and it also hits Joel Souza who's standing behind Helena looking over her shoulder. Now, first responders are called right away and this area is kind of remote so it takes a little while for first responders to arrive on scene. Now, Helena Hutchins does not survive her injuries. And although Joel Souza was also hit with that same round, he does survive his injuries. But cinematographer Helena Hutchins loses her life that day. Of course, everyone on the set is stunned because there shouldn't be any live rounds anywhere near this movie set. 
Law enforcement arrives and quickly begins questioning everybody, including 24-year-old Hannah Guterres Reed, who is the armorer and who is responsible for these weapons. New Mexico State Police begin trying to piece together how live rounds came to be on this movie set and how a live round ended up in this weapon. Now, rumors start to swirl. And one of the rumors is that some of the crew members had taken these weapons to go, you know, target practice with aluminum cans and were using live rounds. Now, it's reported that these live rounds were then taken out of these weapons and these weapons were then returned to the armorer cart, which is the cart that the armorer uses to keep all of the weapons on set. Now, it seems as though Hannah Guterres Reed, the armorer, would have inspected these weapons before they were given to the actors. It seems as though Hannah Guterres Reed would have had to load these weapons with prop rounds and at that point would have found any live rounds that may have been in these weapons. Now, there's also the possibility that a live round could have gotten mixed in with the prop rounds. And these, you know, these prop rounds are supplied by a prop house that sells these dummy rounds. So it's very possible that a live round could have ac uh, accidentally gotten mixed up with the dummy rounds at the prop house where Hannah Guterres Reed would have purchased these dummy rounds. Now, it's also possible that the manufacturer of these rounds who then sold them to the prop house, who then sold them to Hannah Guterres Reed, could have also, you know, accidentally included a live round in this batch of prop rounds. So basically it goes down the line and there could have been a breakdown anywhere along that line. You have the manufacturer of the prop rounds who then sells them to the distributor of the prop rounds. And then those are purchased by Hannah Guterres Reed for the set of the movie Rust. And then ultimately, you know, put into this weapon and handed to Alec Baldwin. Now, here's where it's going to start to get a little controversial because there's going to be a lot of people who are going to argue about whose fault this is. You know, who's accountable for, these, for this live round that ended up in this weapon that took the life of Helena Hutchins. So... There's a lot of people that could have been responsible for this. And I'm going to begin talking about Alec Baldwin's responsibility. Now, as most of us know, or should know, you never take this type of weapon and point it at somebody. Now, obviously, this is a movie. So the idea was for Alec Baldwin to point this weapon at the cinematographer so they could see what angle they wanted to shoot this weapon from. But one thing that most people who handle these types of weapons or are teaching other people to handle these types of weapons is that anytime someone hands you this type of weapon you always double check that weapon to make sure that it's not loaded. Now, I know that Dave Halls told Alec Baldwin that this weapon was not loaded. But 
Alec Baldwin still should have checked that weapon. You never just take someone's word for it that a weapon is unloaded. You never just take a weapon from somebody and take their word for it that it's unloaded. You always double check that weapon, no matter what, no matter if it's prop rounds or if it's completely unloaded. You always double check that weapon just to make sure. Now, Alec Baldwin took the word of Dave Halls and never double checks this weapon. Now, there's also the responsibility of the armorer who would be responsible for all of the weapons on this set. So, the armorer should also have double-checked these weapons to make sure that there are no live rounds in these weapons. Now, Dave Halls, who is the first assistant director also should have double-checked this weapon if he was going to take the responsibility of handing it to Alec Baldwin. Now, Hannah Guterres reed as the armorer, should have also checked every single prop round that was used on that set. She should have checked, double-checked, and triple-checked. Because there should be no live rounds on this movie set. So when I first heard the news report that this had happened, I automatically was curious about where the breakdown along that chain occurred. It's something that interests me. So I was curious about I was also curious about how a live round ended up on this movie set. But I always just figured that this was an accident. I, I, I never believed that anybody on this set, you know, was out to harm anyone else or commit any type of crime. I just assumed when I heard this news that there was an accident on this movie set. Soon after this incident, Alec Baldwin does an interview with George Stephanopoulos. And I was watching this interview because I was curious what Alec Baldwin was going to say about this incident that happened on the set of Rust. Now, I'm just watching this interview and he's talking about the events that happened that day a little bit. And then he says something. And in my opinion, it's a game changer. It definitely raises a red flag for anyone who knows anything about these types of weapons. Alec Baldwin says in this interview, I did not pull the trigger. Now, that definitely caught my attention right away because as someone who knows about these types of weapons, I also know that these weapons do not just go off in your hand. And I'm going to explain to you why. Alec Baldwin was holding an old single action revolver. A single action revolver is a very, very, very simple mechanism. You know, basically, you pull back the hammer, you pull the trigger, the hammer flies forward, strikes the primer on the round, and that sends the projectile. So, there's a lot of safeties in place on this particular weapon. You're not just going to be able to pull the hammer halfway back and then pull the trigger and it go off. That's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to pull the hammer a quarter of the way back, pull the trigger and send the round. That's just not going to happen. That's not the way that it works. So basically, 
Alec Baldwin is explaining what he's doing with this weapon. And he's saying in this interview that he's pulling the hammer back a little bit and he's asking Helena Hutchins, how does that look? And then he pulls it back a little bit more and he's asking Helena Hutchins, how does it look? They're trying to figure out how to shoot the angle of this firearm. So Alec Baldwin states that he ends up pulling the hammer all the way back and that when he lets it go, the hammer flies forward and strikes the primer, which sends the round into Helena Hutchins and Joel Souza. Now, Alec Baldwin maintains that he did not pull this trigger. And that definitely catches my attention because in my opinion, he's lying. He's not telling the truth in my opinion because I do know how these weapons work. And that's not how they work. You don't just pull the hammer back and let it go. It doesn't work like that. There's fail-safes in these weapons so that that does not happen. So one of the things I didn't understand is why would Alec Baldwin lie about this? I mean, I always felt like this was just an accident. You know, this, it, it was, I never felt like anybody on this set was trying to harm anybody or that any crimes were committed. I felt like it was a very unfortunate accident. But then for Alec Baldwin to say that he didn't pull the trigger, <clears throat> that's, definitely, that's definitely a red flag. Because in my opinion, and with my knowledge of these types of weapons, that trigger would have had to be pulled. Now there's two ways that it could have happened. He could have been pulling back the hammer and when he pulled it all the way back, he, you know, inadvertently pulled the trigger. Or he could have also had the trigger pulled all the way back already when he began pulling the hammer back. And that would have allowed that hammer, once it got all the way back, to fly forward if that trigger had already been depressed. You know, it's kind of like when you're watching Old West movies and they're holding the revolver and they're just pulling the hammer back and, you know, firing rounds. Now, the only way that can happen if, is if the trigger is depressed while you're pulling the hammer back. So one way or another... Alec Baldwin would have had to pull that trigger, in my opinion. And I just never understood why he would lie about that. Why, why would you say, I didn't pull the trigger? You know, he doubles down on that and he tells, you know, George Stephanopoulos, I know better than to point this type of weapon at someone and pull the trigger. So, you know, it basically means he knows better. He knew better than to point the, the weapon and pull the trigger, which that's been a big argument. A lot of people have said, well, how would he know? He's only an actor. You know, he doesn't know about these types of weapons. But in this interview, he confirms that he does know about these types of weapons and that he does know not to point this weapon at someone and pull the trigger, which is why I guess he said that he didn't pull the trigger. I was actually very surprised that Alec Baldwin would even do this interview because I feel like the things that he was saying in this interview could definitely get him into some legal trouble. So I was kind of confused as to why you know, his attorney would allow him to even do this interview because in addition to saying that he did not 
pull the trigger. He also stated that he didn't really feel any type of responsibility for, you know, firing this round into Helena Hutchins and Joel Souza. He felt like he wasn't responsible for that because it wasn't his job to know whether this weapon was loaded with a live round or not. And in a way, I, I, I kind of agree that he shared in the responsibility of using this weapon because even though he's just an actor and doesn't understand how these weapons work, he still understands enough to know that you don't just, you know, assume that a weapon is unloaded, pointed at someone, and then pull the trigger. But that's exactly what he did. So it kind of surprised me that he even did this interview. But when he says, you know, I don't feel any responsibility. I don't feel like I'm responsible for this because it wasn't my fault. To me, that kind of just, you know, it kind of left me with a bad impression of Alec Baldwin. Because who says that after, you know, just taking someone's life? I mean, he just, you know, Helena Hutchins was a wife. She was a mom. And Alec Baldwin was holding the firearm that took her life. But he doesn't feel any type of responsibility. So the fact that he said those two things in the same interview leads me to believe that Alec Baldwin, in my opinion, would lie about pulling that trigger which I absolutely 100% believe that he did. So as I said, I just always assumed that this was a very unfortunate accident that took an innocent person's life. But I never believed that anybody on this set had any type of criminal intentions or, you know, of course, I, I didn't believe that anybody on this set you know, had any intentions of hurting anyone. Which, in my opinion, would, you know, would make this an accident. But then when Alec Baldwin does this interview, it raises a lot of questions. Because why lie about pulling the trigger? A anyone who knows anything about a single-action revolver is going to know that that's not true. So it didn't really make a lot of sense. And there's a lot of people, you know, who could be blamed. And there's a lot of, you know, there, there would be a lot of places down this chain where there could have been breakdowns or there could have been a breakdown. I, didn't, I never really thought to blame it on one person because, as I said, I just felt like it was an accident. Now, right now, we know that Hannah Guterres Reed was just convicted. So they are going to hold her responsible for this. And Alec Baldwin is coming up for trial next. Now, some people have said that because Hannah Guterres Reed is being held accountable, then Alec Baldwin must not be responsible in any way. But I don't believe that's true. I believe they could both be held responsible, which it kind of shocks me because I, I didn't believe that there would be criminal charges in this case. But New Mexico is going to try it just that way. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when Alec Baldwin comes up for trial here real soon. There was a cast of characters in this incident 
that happened just outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico. And we're going to talk about all these people. And we're going to talk about their responsibilities. And, you know, about why Alec Baldwin wouldn't tell the truth about pulling this trigger. So we're going to cover a lot of this information because, as I said, you know, I didn't really plan on making any videos about this because this was something that was just a personal interest of mine. But a lot of you has, have asked me to talk about this, and this is something that I would definitely love to talk about. I have an, a lot of knowledge about these types of things, and it's something that I definitely like to understand, you know, where that breakdown happened in the chain of events that led to the accidental death of Helena Hutchins. So please stay tuned for my next video. And if you liked my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. We'll see you next time.